well here we are on day two also we don't blow any hydraulic lines today that kind of puts a damper on progress um we got a fair bit of rain overnight so i don't know if that's going to make this job easier or harder and definitely makes the day more dreary kind of hard to get in the mood to do anything when it looks like this outside um housekeeping keep having guys say as a matter of fact, I had one guy go as far as to call me lazy for not doing it. Had a bunch of guys keep saying, why am I not cutting any of this up for firewood? Or I should be cutting it up for firewood or yada, yada, yada. Okay, you see everything in that, in that tree line right there? That is almost 100% box elder. And there's a couple ash in there that have been dead for, been, for many moons and they're so rotten they ain't worth cutting up for firewood anyway, which is a shame because ash actually makes really good firewood. Box elder, not so much. Box elders go for wood, throw one on the fire, go for another. It's, it's all shit wood. There is nothing here worth cutting up for firewood. And even if it was, I do not have time to fuck around with cutting up firewood. Because apparently those guys that said that forgot the fact that I still have a tractor to get overhauled this winter. I got a planter to get set up this winter. I have several other pieces of equipment to get going. Not to mention I have other fields I got to go clean up down trees in. I got too much shit going on to fuck around cutting up shit for firewood. Second off, there are two inherent problems with cutting up firewood. First off, it's very labor intensive to cut up firewood. The only way to make money, in my opinion, cutting up firewood is you block it all up into 10 foot logs, run a firewood processor, come out, you set it on the firewood processor with a skid steer, you sit on the firewood processor, run it, you dump it out in a pile, and then you take your grapple bucket on your skid steer, you dump it in a dump trailer, and then you take the dump trailer, whoever wants it, you dump it in their front yard, you never lay a hand on it. That's the only way to make fire or make money doing firewood. Second off, when you deliver firewood, you got you got people that want you to not only deliver it, but they want you to stack it and then put it in their basement and then put it in their damn fireplace because they're too lazy and then when it's all said and done, don't want to pay you for it. I farm and I work full time. I ain't got time to fuck around with firewood. I want all this shit on the ground in a pile, burnt, gone so I can farm this. That's, that's what this thing is. If you don't like it, get over it. Um... And 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it might have been a lot easier to get rid of some of this stuff because there was a lot of people putting in wood boilers and wood boilers don't care what they burn. Pallets, box elder, pine, whatever the hell, if you could burn it, you could put it in a wood boiler and it wouldn't give a shit. Well, the state didn't like that and they made so many rules and regulations. They didn't outlaw wood boilers. They just made so many rules and regulations that it made it cost prohibitive to put them in and now... You can barely beg, borrow, or steal a new wood boiler in this state. There are still dealers for them, but there's just so many rules and regulations around them that there's not too many people putting them in new anymore. So you can't even get rid of the stuff that way. But it sucks, because wood boilers are awesome. So, yeah, none of this is getting cut up for firewood. Quit bringing it up. Second off, there have been several people concerned about me working this ground, which is understandable. Uh, this is not my first rodeo doing projects like this. Back when I worked on the farm, the big guy north of town that I don't like to work for anymore because, well, I'd, I'd quit working for him because I saw him do too much shady shit for my taste. And he pissed a lot of people off about three years ago because he started pushing, pushing, bringing in a pot farm around here. And that did, that, that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. There's a point. It, it just, anyway, don't need to go down that road anyway. Back when I worked for him, we were taking out tree lines every winter. It was common practice. Because his equipment was so big that tree lines were just in his way, so he wanted them gone. So, standard operating procedure for taking out a tree line. Bring in the excavator. Knock all the trees down. Bring in the dozer. Get them all in a pile. Burn them. Bring out your desk chisel. Run over it. Once shallow, depending on how big the trees were, two to three passes. You do it once shallow. If you had bigger trees, you do it another time a little deeper, and then you do it another time a little deeper. That way you're busting up small ruts at a time. And then you come out and you diss the ever-living shit out of it. And then you spend a lot of time picking up roots, and then you come diss the living shit out of it again, and you probably have to spend a little bit of time picking up more roots, and then you're good to go. 
that's how you take a fence line out this ain't my first rodeo done this before done this a lot more than i want to admit it's kind of kind of a shitty job very work intensive unless you got a root rake on a dozer which he had but his root rake was on a big deer 750 and the spacing was so far apart on the root rake that you missed all the small roots so he still ended up walking it anyway a smaller dozer with a smaller root rake works life a lot easier um so as far as like disking this instead of chisel plowing it this this field has been in pasture for and hay for at least 30 years and grass hay at that there's not any legumes out here and the problem with the grass hay field that old is the root system on a grass hay field is incredibly shallow you're talking a root system that's probably only about that deep which is why when you get the drought grass won't do anything it just sits there and won't grow if it had legumes in it it'd be a different story like alfalfa or clover or something like that because they shoot a deeper root system and fight compaction that's why if you drive past a, a mix or a, a, a blend hay field in a drought the legumes will still be growing and the grass will be just sitting there dormant because it ain't getting no water so this field has been into that so long that disking it is not as unless you had a like a roam or a will check or something meant for deep tillage a, a big plowing disc you're just wasting your time you might as well not even try to plant anything on it because a it's already compacted from being piss poor managed for the last few years and b discs make road beds that's why i hate discs for primary tillage it pained me to have to use it ahead of wheat but you got to do what you got to do and mother nature will take care of that over winter as far as making a primary seed bed in the spring with a disc, you will never find me doing it. Never, never, never. Not around here. Not going to happen. So, that's what's going on there. And then, I had a bunch of guys on the last video already saying, because they didn't watch the video all the way to the end, which I hate it when people... This is why my channel will never get overly huge, because I don't have... I, I have very low level of patience for people making stupid comments and most of the time people that make stupid comments make stupid comments because they didn't actually watch the whole video and they were fast forwarding through shit and they missed all the important information and these people didn't watch that last video all the way to the end where i said after i got done taking that tree out that i'm not taking any more trees out that size with the mini the only reason i actually took that tree out was because i kind of wanted to see if i could even do it but that's her limit i ain't going i'm not taking any more trees out i'll take trees out like this this stuff was easy i'd Duck, took a couple bucket scoops behind it to bust the roots off got behind it and pushed it over it was easy so for all the idiots saying that this job is too big for the mini you didn't pay attention i'm gonna take out all the small stuff that i can get with the mini and then i'll leave all that big shit for the guy to bring in his bigger machine and get him out of the way for me no i'm not gonna go out and rent a bigger excavator because i have to be down here i have today i have tomorrow i have to work monday i got a special video coming up tuesday i'm excited for that so tuesday night i got something good coming for you and then i got wednesday and i got thursday because friday which should be christmas eve right i think friday is the 24th i gotta start getting stuff around to get the tea in the shop and then between christmas and new year's the tea's getting tore apart and then after new year's i'm working on the 1950 tea and then after the 1950 tea's done i gotta start working on the planter I have until Christmas. Anything that's not down on the ground after Christmas is waiting until next year. I ain't going to try to get, if I don't have time for it, I ain't going to try to get this whole project done this year. I will get it. I'll get that side taken care of. I'll get it opened up down here so I can drive around both sides. Um, I'll have that guy bring his bigger hoe out, get rid of that tree, get rid of that big one in the corner that I had to all the way back in the corner not in this not associated with this all the way back in the corner there's a big tree i can't get actually there's two of them back there i can't get and see about having them sneak up a little bit and get some of these out just to kind of open this up back here make my life easier because i got beans going back out here um, i'm gonna plant beans out here next next summer or next spring so it's not like i'm fighting getting that corn planter in here and not having room to maneuver i'll just have my 66 and the drill and then cut cutting with the 7300 i don't need a crap ton of room with that little stuff and then whatever's still here we'll take care of next fall so 
I only got a few days to work down here. It's not like I'm trying to get it all done. That being said, we'll probably be down here later this winter to burn it when we got snow on the ground so we're not catching anything on fire, which also we talked about a little bit yesterday with the land or I talked about a little bit yesterday with the landlord because he wants to help out a little bit when he can. Probably gonna make a couple smaller brush piles down through here rather than one big one so we ain't gotta get everything all the way down to the far side. So that's kind of this we're, we kind of have a, an evolving plan going on here because with the equipment i got like if i had a big i'd really like to find a 225 cat i like those excavators i think they look cool a 225 is it's still a big machine but it's not super duper huge you can haul it without permits but i've looked at them before and they still bring a crap ton of money so apparently guys must like them they must be decent machines. I know they had. I know they were kind of quirky, especially in the steering and drive. But anyhow, so that's the housekeeping for this video. If you fast forwarded through it and you missed it, and you make a stupid comment. I'm gonna call you out for it. That's just how this channel works. Um, sorry for those of you that get offended, but guess what? We don't care about your feelings around here. So anyway, um, I, they gave me the. They gave me the key to the barn. That's where the mini's parked. So I'm going to go in there and get that warmed up. And while that's warming up, I was able to bring, since I got my truck, I was able to bring the saw and everything. I'm going to take a couple of them bigger ones and chunk them up so I can manage them. And then we're going to consolidate this stuff into a pile here. And then we'll keep trucking down that side of that fence line and get that done. And then we should have, my hopes are to have this side done. I was hoping to have it done yesterday until I blew that hydraulic line get this side done as much as I can and then get the fence all out today and if I could do that I'll call it a victory anything over that for today is gonna be fluff and then tomorrow I'm going to get all of the scragglers out that I can that are in that other field and then we'll start working on the center section here so that's the plan so I'm not gonna show you inside their barn because it's not my property and it's none of your business so I'm doing that out of respect for them, and we'll catch you guys here in a little bit. Okay, I got three piles kind of going, so it's a little chilly out. I almost wish I had worn my coveralls. Would have been nice. It's actually, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's snowing right now. It's supposed to be shit today. And then tomorrow it's supposed to be nice again. It's supposed to be, so we'll have to see what happens.
outside other than that tree and these three right here are done and I might have been able to get these two but if I gotta have somebody coming to take trees out ain't no sense of killing that little guy trying to get things like that out when I'm gonna have somebody here the bigger machine anyway so it took longer than I thought to get this corner done because that tree right there is a very, very, very dead elm. Like very, very, very dead. Like hollow, I don't know what's keeping that branch from falling in the road dead. It's probably gonna be one of them deals where it'll be a perfectly calm summer day, not a breeze blowing, not a leaf moving, nothing, and that thing will just decide to, you know, give up the ghost. But anyway, um, the main spar off of that had fallen down many moons ago and they cut it up and just shoved it back in the tree line and i wanted to get that kind of somewhat cleaned up so i got a hold of what i could and drug it over that pile well it was kind of a bitch because it was so rotten that everything you touched exploded because it was just powder it just it was i bet it took me 45 minutes just to clean that corner up for all that dead shit I'm getting a little chilly, not gonna lie. Although at least we are starting to see a peak of sun and, sun and we got some blue sky. Would have been nice if that was here earlier. But all in all, for this little base on that is like 78 or 7,900 pounds and it's got the counterweight on the back that's supposed to take it up to like 8,500, I think. Because basically this counterweight is an option for this thing and it's supposed to give it the same capacity as a 304 you just don't have the horsepower so anyhow for just a little guy it'll do quite a bit yeah i probably could have rented a bigger machine and done it a little faster sorry if my hand's shaking i'm cold um but I try to make do with what I have. And the only rental place we got around here that deals in equipment big enough to do that is a division of our cat dealer. And they don't do weekend rentals. I've tried, I tried to rent a telehandler from them before to do some bin work. And you have either a minimum hour requirement or they do it by the week so and i can't even remember what their minimum hour requirement is but um basically if you come out and you put two hours on it and are done with it tough shit you're paying for the whole minimum hour limit and they do that i'm sure because they don't want the damn weekend warriors renting a half million dollar machine to come rip trees out and fuck the machine up and then there you go so anyhow um and i think they actually require that you have some sort of insurance it seems like that was one of their deals when i tried to rent that telehandler you had to have some sort of liability insurance which i does not have other than what's covered under my homeowners <laughs> So regardless, um, I use what I got, make do with what I have. That's the way everybody used to do it back before our modern days of convenience. And it could be worse. I could be doing this with a team of mules, a pickaxe, an axe, and a stick of dynamite. So I'll take that over a shovel and an axe any day of the week. But anyway, um, now that that side is done, I'm gonna start working on this fence. And I have thought about the best way to do it and basically I've come up with a conclusion that there's no best way to do it. Um, I had thought about trying to get some trees off of it first, but my fear is if I start yanking on trees and then you got trees falling the wrong way and then you're crushing the fence and then you got a tangled up mess and it's all wadded up in the trees you're trying to get rid of and I don't, 
I think my best bet is to try to get the fence out first. I'm really sorry, my hand is shaking a lot. So I brought the grinder with me so we can just zip these guys off. Please don't tell me they stay stapled at shit. That's fun. But most of this works probably. Yeah, there's no there's not gonna be a fun way to do this, but I want to get it out of the way so that I got an easy way to get between the fields without having to drive clear the hell around. So I might have to go get a stepladder or something so I can get up because these are eight foot posts and I can't reach that high. So I'll see what I can get done here. Wow, my hand is shaking a lot. I am really sorry. Well, this ain't going to be nearly as bad as I thought. Um, just for shits and giggles, I grabbed onto that thing with a mini and yanked on it right next to that wood post with the staples in it, peeled it right off. So all I got to do is go down on the, or go down the steel post and uh, cut the wire hold nose and I can rip, him, or rip it right off of the wooden post. And we'll be in business.
continue pulling this fence out before I go any further well first off I noticed yesterday that once you get past this point there's no more of the telephone pole chunks so it's all just steel posts from here down um, I'm gonna have to haul some dirt in to fill this wet spot in too I don't know if this is where those deer and elk had a spot rut out to waller in or if it's actually a spring or what but should be able to peel some dirt that spot's high right there should be able to peel some of that dirt off and push it down into here and hopefully that doesn't prove to be a problem area because it's big enough to get stuck in but uh anyway there's a little bit of shit growing into the fence from here down that's not too terrible i think we're catching it before it's going to become a major issue but um before i start cutting any more fence out i am going to go through and on this side pull all this shit out so that i'm not fighting it and then i forgot oh hey that wasn't dropped the other day um i forgot about this short section of fence probably gonna work on this today too I don't even know if I'm going to bother cutting this one loose from the post. I might just try to yank the post out and roll it all up in a ball and call it good. Huh. So, I got the mini warming up. I'm going to, like I say, I'll come get this stuff cleaned out of here. So we're not working around it. And then, uh... And we'll catch you guys when we go start yanking more fence. All right. Well, I got everything. Well, mostly everything. I got all the big shit. Drug away from the uh, other side of the fence. That was fun. It's like every time they had a tree fall down rather than, like, taking care of it, they just pushed it up against the fence. But we got it taken care of, so... Got another pile started. So now we get the fun part of going down through here and zipping the fence off the post. I tried. What I was hoping I'd be able to do, and rather than waste time doing this, was just rip the posts out. But it's grown into shit so much. I tried to start down at the other end, just ripping the post and the fence out and everything all in one, one piece. And I don't have enough ass with that excavator to overcome everything. So... We're going to have to do it separate, unfortunately. So, yeah. Onwards and upwards. All right. I got all the fence cut loose from the post. Sorry I didn't get any video of it, but you didn't miss much. It was just like 30 minutes of me stumbling through all them trees, carrying a grinder and a ladder, cussing and saying how much I hate chain link fence as far as an animal enclosure. Um, I already got one section pulled off. I did that one first to just see what kind of mess I was getting into. It actually didn't go that bad. Um, all the shit that was tangled up in it, I figured out, well, you can see all the stuff that's laying out at like a 60 degree angle with stuff that was, or stuff that was tangled up in it. And basically I found out through a little bit of trial and error that if I get it pulled off the post, get it laid down as flat as I could get it. And then drive down the line and anywhere there's something stuck in it, get a hold of it with a bucket and pull on it right in front of whatever's stuck in it. And it'll either pull off of the sapling or pull the sapling out by the root, one of the two. So I'm going to get these two sections pulled off and get them laying on the ground. And then I'm going to go home for lunch. And when I come back, I'm going to bring some loppers with me because I'm not getting anywhere near that fence with a chainsaw. I'm not about to screw up a chainsaw chain. But try to cut out some of the stuff that's still tangled up in it and at least make a half-hearted attempt to get it out of there. I think they'll still take it at the scrapyard, but I don't want to I don't want to find out. So anyway, let's see what we can do about getting these last two sections pulled off. It's almost warm enough to lose the car parts cold when I got here this morning, but it warmed up rather quickly.
Okay, so the last challenge is this section of fence right here. Um, I already got, obviously, all the shit pulled away from it on this side. I don't want to do anything with anything on the other side until I get the fence out of the way because that's yard. Although, I mean, I guess in the end it doesn't matter because I'm going to farm that anyway. But uh, everything on that side of the fence is like right up against the fence. So... I think it's gonna be easier to pull the fence back and get that shit in the second pass. But this thing is so grown in, I think it's gonna make my life a whole lot easier to just take the grinder and zip both sides of it and get this thing out, throw it on the pile, burn the fence out of it and worry about that later. I should be able to get, get a hold of it and get it pulled off of the these two pieces. I got most of the limbs ripped off already. Um.
everything else is pretty straightforward um the only shitty part is on this one all the, the poster on this side of the fence not that side and there's i don't know this is also these are also shorter posts and shorter fence so i should hopefully be able to do this in one piece without having to zip the fence off ideally and then it gets interesting right here because from here down it's all laid down so And these are bigger posts. This is like actual well pipe. That one's been concreted in. I'm hoping. Is that a hunk of concrete? That's a hunk of concrete. Oh boy. These have all been concreted in. Oh boy. But I'm taking this section basically up to this high beam. Actually, that's not high beam. That's nope that is i beam that nope it's h beam either way taking it up to here and then i'll try to get a hold of this kind of and like shove it down the hill a little bit so that i don't hook it with something so i'm just gonna take a grinder zip it here get all this hopefully i can get a hold of it get it flopped up into the field there's luckily not a whole lot of shit growing into it so but i'm gonna cut it there and i'll cut it here where it starts to stand back up and then i'll take it down to that stump and then i'll get the other side of the stump so that's the plan i'll get it cut and then we'll start getting it flipped out of <laughs> up want to talk my ear off he talked to me right up until i got my truck and left so didn't get a chance to do it down there but um all the fences out except for like a five foot section i forgot about but it cut loose all i gotta do is grab a hold of it and rip it um it's still hooked to the stump so um i couldn't just pull it off by hand you have to get on it with the mini and grab a hold of it and actually pull it off the stump but it should come off everything else is balled up in a pile um for all the guys that were concerned about me losing money on this deal, he told me today, I get to haul all that fence in for scrap and whatever, whatever it brings, I get to keep the money. So I'm betting, Teeter, quit licking that. That is glycol, that will hurt you. Um, yeah, quit licking that. So I'll bet there's easily six, seven hundred dollars worth of scrap there. That stuff's heavy. Um, so I got both one, two, three, four, five, six rolls of fence, 
all the posts. So yeah, there's quite a bit of weight there. And the boot, I'm getting a probably a 12 foot long piece of six inch H beam. Well, that I don't know if I got that in a video or not. Digging that out, there's a piece of not the H beam that was in the concrete, but when I was pushing that corner back. I found another piece of H beam that didn't have anything. It was just laying in the dirt. Didn't no concrete on it, no fence, no nothing. Perfectly straight, beautiful piece of H beam. I think it'd be good to weld some loops on for some chain and make a uh, land drag out of it. It's a nice, a heavy piece of H beam. So, and he's giving me that. Um, so, I could not farm that property at all with the work I got into it right now and be money ahead because so far all I have is like thirty dollars worth of diesel fuel and. Oh, about six hours today, about eight hours yesterday, and about two and a half hours Friday invested. So, then I'm probably going to work down there for two more days, maybe a little bit two today afternoon. We'll see what happens. Um, so, like I say, with what I'm going to make off of scrapping all that fencing, I could not farm that property, and I'll still come out ahead with the money I'm going to make off of scrapping that. So, you ain't got to worry about that, not to mention he's not going to screw me because I've known the guy, we, he's been a friend of the family for years and he's not going to screw me over. So I'm not worried about it. Um, there comes a point where you still got to have faith in humanity and I do not have any contracts. Well, I'll take it back. I got one contract that the only reason they do it is so they got something to turn into their tax people. It's not even a really good formal contract. I got one contract because the guy's a pain in the ass to deal with. And I got one more contract with an ab for one of the fields down in the muck, which the original people I rented it from didn't even really, it was the same deal. They didn't really care. They just had the contract so they had something legit to turn into their tax people. Um, the new people, I'm going to have a contract with them because... I'm going to have a contract with them. That's just how I feel about them until they prove me wrong. Um, but I still have faith in people until I get burned. I'm going to continue to have faith in people. So far, I've done very well on a word and a handshake. I have yet to be screwed on anything until that point comes, which I haven't had a single issue in the past 10 years I've been farming. Actually, longer than that, 11 years. I started in 09. Right? No, 12 years. Holy shit, I've been doing this for a while. So anyway, 12 years, I have not had a single issue. I trust the people I work with. I'm picky about who I wreck ground from for that reason because I don't want to have to have a pain in the ass later down the road. So around here, good neighbors still mean something. I ain't worried about it. Um, that being said, I apologize. I should apologize for seeming like an asshole at the beginning of the video. Some of you may have unsubscribed right when you started hearing that. If you have been around here for a while, you realize I didn't mean anything by it and you made it to this point. Um, I didn't mean to be a dick about it, but I was getting the same damn comments on both videos on this project so far. It's like, you know what? I'm doing the best I can with the time, material, and equipment I have available to me in a timely manner. If you can't appreciate that, you may want to do it another way. That doesn't mean that's the way I'm going to do it. Don't get your feelings hurt because that's not the way I'm going to do it. I'm doing what I can with what I got. So it's just frustrating when you get the same comments over and over and over and over. If you want or two people do it, okay. But after a while, it's like a broken record. And it just starts to like... Argh. So, I wasn't trying to be a dick, just getting a little frustrated with it. And then I had the one asshole that didn't like how I was running the excavator. Even though I've never claimed to be a professional heavy equipment operator. And I probably have, in total, in my lifetime, less than 25 hours of seat time on any excavator of any maker model. So, I don't think I'm doing that bad. And the controls on that thing, they're getting kind of old and they're getting kind of laggy, especially 
this stick, which is your boom up, down. When I'm sitting in the machine, I know what they do. This is boom, boom back, boom out, and this is swing. Yeah. So your your boom and your swing lever, that one is laggy for some reason, but they're electric over hydraulic, so what can you do about it? So it's just something you gotta get used to. But anyway, um with all that being said. Like I say, I got to work tomorrow, and then I got to finish up Christmas shopping after work, so I'm not going to be down there tomorrow. Tuesday, I got invited to do something really cool, so I'm going to have a really good video for you guys Tuesday, I hope. I know for sure I'll get it up Tuesday afternoon, so be looking for that. Um, I'm, I'm really super excited about this. It's going to be, I, I really hope it turns out like I have it pictured in my mind. I'm really, really excited for it. Um and hopefully i'll be back down there tuesday afternoon for a couple hours but te teeter is also going in to get fixed um tuesday so i gotta go back down and i take her in at seven gotta pick her up at five so it depends on what's going on with her so i like to get down there at least a little bit and finish up that one corner i was working in get the rest of the trees and the stumps out which there ain't much more an hour worth of work there maybe maybe 45 minutes at least get that finished up and then wednesday thursday we'll be down there all day and thursday will be my last day working down there at least in a sense of ripping stuff out the rest of the time we'll be down there consolidating piles and burning and getting it ready um and then Friday before Christmas, I gotta get go get my engine stand and hopefully go get our hoist for that goes in the shop so we can start working on this guy. So that's the plan. Um, this video is probably gonna end up kind of long. I apologize. I didn't think I had enough video yesterday to make a video, so I wanted to combine it with today. So you're getting one long video. Um, anyway. So with that being said, that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one.